In today's episode, I start building the shunting yard, add in a good shed, and cut away other parts of the layout. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome back to episode 5 of Building a TT120 Model Railway, the series where I'm building a TT gauge layout which will be appearing at the Spa Valley Railway's Model Railway Weekend later this year. As always, this episode is sponsored by TMC, aka The Model Centre, really great retailer, fantastic to have them on board, and I'll be telling you exactly why that is later on in the video. But right now, it's all systems go, because today I'm hoping to finish the last of the track laying on this layout, and maybe even move on to some of the basic scenic work too. So if you remember the track plan I showed all the way back in episode one, I'm going to build a small shunting yard at the front of the layout, separate from the main circuit so that a goods train can be assembled here while trains continue to run round the loops. Now, since showing you that plan, I've had a bit of a think and once the smoke had cleared, I realised that I wanted to make a change to the layout and I think it's going to make a really big difference. Here's the original plan for the layout and today I'm going to be focusing on the shunting yard just here. Now I've designed this as an ingle nook shunting puzzle with its own separate head shunt and that's so it can be operated independently from the trains running around the main circuits. However, it did occur to me that the head shunt is a little short. It works for the ingle nook puzzle, but if you put together a long freight train, especially with a large diesel locomotive, there isn't going to be enough room for it to be able to exit the yard. So I've decided to amend the plan slightly and put in another point on the cut through. This will allow longer trains to be marshalled in the yards and let trains arrive and depart in either direction too. It can also be used as a handy run round loop as well if you use the main line, so there's an extra bonus there as well. On the actual layout you can see this is the location for the shunting yard, on the left side just before the main line goes into the tunnel underneath the upper level. These are the points for the yard and once again I'll be using the short radius ones for this area. And you can get a rough idea of what the new loop will look like here too. Finally there's also the new point that will lead from the cut through. The first thing to do then is to cut the rails here using the Dremel. The excess section of track can then be removed. I'll then drill a hole for the point motor that will match up with the position of the tie bar. Before I put the point in place, I'll just lay a strip of cork beyond it and this is where the additional track for the loop will go. And this is just glued down using PVA. As with all the points on this layout, I'm using double sided tape on the surface to hold it down. With the holes for the motor and frog feed poked through the thin layer of tape, the point can then be installed. You may notice here that I've moved the insulated joiners to the exit of this point and that's so that the reverse loop section will still work. And then the track for the cut through is connected back up as well. Before I go any further, it's just a good idea to test that the track is still nice and smooth. Here you can see the Mark 1 carriage runs through the new point really smoothly, so we're fine to move on. It's time to move on to creating the yard itself, and the first thing is to lay the cork bed for both the points and the sidings. Again, these are glued down using PVA. And when everything is in place, I hold it down with some weights while it dries. This is the ladder of points that will control access to each siding, and I'm hoping I can lay all of these in one go. I'll follow the same method I used earlier, first drilling the holes for the motors and the frog feeds. The tape is then stuck down. It's a much longer strip this time because I'm attempting to add all the points in one go.
and I also add some smaller sections of tape around it just to account for the diverging lines. And now the moment of truth. Sticking down several points in one go like this is always a bit of a challenge as you have to line up several things perfectly. With a bit of adjustment though, eventually I get it all situated and really that is the hard work done for this section. I can now also install the section of track that connects the yard to the cut through. With some holes drilled for the feeder wires, the track for the first siding can then be installed and connected up to the point. The same process is then done for the second siding too. Now I'm planning to have a good shed in this yard and MS Models have very kindly sent over this example of their LMS good shed. This is just the main structure of the building, but you can see it's got really great detail. The brickwork is really nice, we even have drain pipes included on the 3D print too, and the areas around some of the windows and the access doors are really nice too. This is going to be a big feature of the yard, and now that I know where it'll be situated, I can figure out where the third siding will run just behind this shed. First I'll put down some PVA glue ready for the cork to be laid over the top. With this section I've decided to extend the cork slightly too with an extra strip, just so that everything is on a nice level. Eventually when I do the scenics for the yard I'll have to do this around the front of the shed too so that can sit on the same level as the track. The feeder holes for the wires are then drilled through the surface. And finally the track can be installed. With the shed back in place again you can see the yard already starting to take shape and I can't wait to get some scenery on here. If you're building a TT120 layout, or any kind of model railway for that matter, well, you're gonna need a lot of stuff to make that dream a reality. And that's where the sponsor for this series, the Model Center, comes in. TMC sell everything you need to make a layout from track to controllers, at buildings and scenics, but they also have a wide range of locos and rolling stock available in all different scales and gauges. Uh, they've actually even got Backman's brand new NG7 range uh, available too, uh, along with TT120 of course. Uh, something I will say about the Model Center 2 is that they always seem to have a good selection of deals on their website, so it's worth checking in with them regularly just to see what they have on offer. Um, in some cases I've seen locos with pretty hefty reductions on them, which could be great for those of you on a bit of a tighter budget. Uh, you can see that for yourself at their website, themodelcenter.com. Uh, as always, I'll put a link down in the description for you, so you can click that once you've finished watching this video, of course. <laughs> Thanks again to TMC for sponsoring this series, and speaking of watching this video, let's get back to the action. Before I move on, I just need to do a couple of quick things like painting the sides of the rails on the points. For the rest of the layout, I'll be using a spray paint to cover the track quickly, but around the points, I want to have a bit more precision. I'm doing this now because I find it's easier to paint the rail sides before the ballast goes down. This way, it's less of a problem if you accidentally miss. Soon enough, the points for the yard can be ballasted. As I've shown in previous episodes, the tape is really handy here, and the loose ballast just drops into the gaps between the sleepers and sticks to the surface. When you're just throwing ballast over the points like this, it does look a bit messy initially. The satisfying bit though comes when it's time to remove all the excess. For this, I like to use a small handheld vacuum, and with a couple of quick passes, the loose ballast is removed, leaving only what has stuck to the tape as a nice base layer. And not forgetting that new point on the cut through, this is also ballasted using the same technique. In my opinion, it's a really quick way to get a neatly ballasted point with minimal fuss, and you can reuse all the excess you collect up for use elsewhere too. 
Like I did in the station, I'm going to add uncoupling ramps to the siding so that wagons can be disconnected without requiring the hand of God. The first step here is to drill some holes between the sleepers. The area around these holes is then painted grey just to help it blend in with the ballast later on. I then have some bent wire which I'm using for the basis of the ramps and if you remember from my previous video I'm using copper wire now so that this doesn't interfere with the magnets on some of the locos. Then underneath the baseboard, a servo motor is installed for each of the ramps. The servo itself is held by a laser cut bracket I've made, and these can just be screwed to the baseboard in the correct position. With a bit of trial and error, the wire is then bent so that it can interface with the arm of the servo motor, and that'll allow it to move up and down. I then paint the visible part of the copper wire with the same brown I used for the rail sides. Again, this will just help it blend in and disguise that shiny copper. The servo motors are then hooked up to their individual control boards and the power feeds can be soldered onto each one. I also have wires for the switches to be soldered on too. These run back to my D sub connectors which will eventually connect to the control panel. The motors are also installed for the new points in the yard too, again with various power and switch wires being soldered on. And you can see that the wiring is starting to get quite complex on this main baseboard. I am doing my best to keep things tidy, but it's definitely a challenge. So believe it or not, all the track laying is now done for the layout. This is a pretty huge milestone on what might just be the most complicated layout I've ever built. That means though, we can finally start to move on to the scenic work. And the first thing I always like to do is the ballasting. I do have a problem though, because the incline is built on the Woodland Scenics risers. These have gaps to allow the riser to bend round corners, but if I try to put ballast on this, then most of it will just fall straight through. So to combat this, I'm going to add a thin layer of paper mache either side of the track just to cover up those gaps. This will give me a consistent surface to work with, which I can then lay the ballast on. And the paper mache is literally just strips of newspaper soaked in watered down PVA. When the glue hardens, so does the newspaper, and while it's only a thin layer, it is enough to support the ballast. It's now time to paint the rail sides, and as I said earlier, I'm going to be using spray paint for this. Now this is exactly the same rail match sleeper grind paint that I've used on the points, except here it's in an aerosol can. With the large amount of track needing to be painted on this layout, this is definitely the easiest way to get this job done quickly. And you can see I just put thin layers over the track which works really well. You'll notice I'm staying away from the points too as these have already been done and I don't want to get too much paint on the existing ballast. Now, I may have all the track laid, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm really only just getting started with this layout, and there's still a very long way to go to get all the scenery done. Well, if you can't wait to see what happens next, good news, because you can see the next episode in the series right now by becoming a channel member. Now, you'll get ad-free early access to new videos, as well as exclusive videos that are just for members. Plus, there's loads of other stuff too, and it's only £1.99. So, like I'm always saying, it's less than the price of a single cup of coffee, which, that's not bad, right? I put a link down in the description for those of you who are interested in seeing the next video, and yeah, hopefully I'll see some of you in the members area really, really soon. I can now move on to the ballasting itself, and as always, I'll be using a standard technique of adding the ballast dry, then fixing it in place with watered down PVA over the top. 
I'm using Woodland Scenic's Fine Grey Ballast for this. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to use it yourself, along with everything else I've shown in the video today. Ballasting is a pretty time consuming process, and this layout in particular has a lot of track on it which all needs doing. In comparison to my double O gauge layout, that was a single line and generally I only ballasted one module at a time, so I was doing it in much smaller segments. Here though we have a double track main line to do, plus all the extras like the incline and the cut through. The only bit I'm not doing at the moment are two of the sidings in the yard and the upper level. I want to use a different surface for the yard, so I'll cover that when I come around to doing the scenics for that area. For the upper level, I'll ballast this once I have the platforms in place, and that's so I can ballast right up to the edge of them. By the way, if you see me tapping the brush on the rails at any point, that's just a handy trick to get the loose ballast particles to jump off the sleepers and down into the gaps. With the ballast all in place, it's now time to add the glue. This is a mix of 50% PVA and 50% water. Once you've got all that nicely mixed up, you then add a couple of drops of washing up liquid and mix that in as well. The washing up liquid breaks the surface tension of the water, so instead of forming little droplets on the surface, it spreads right through the ballast. It's then just a case of repeating this process over the entire layout. You might also notice that I first missed the loose ballast with water before adding the glue, as I find this helps it to spread out more evenly. This is by far the biggest ballasting job I have ever done, so it was quite a mammoth session, but I have to admit I'm really glad that all the track is now laid so that I can move on to more scenic focused jobs like this. Once all the glue is down, the layout will then need to be left for some time to allow everything to dry. Personally, I wait at least overnight, but sometimes it can take longer for the ballast to fully harden. Soon enough though, we have the finished results, and as you can see, everything still works. Once the ballast has dried, I tend to run a track rubber over the tops of the rails just to remove any glue residue that might have dried on the surface. But yeah, it's great to see trains running on the layout again, and it feels like I've taken a big step forward today. And not forgetting the shunting yard either. I've now added the tops to the uncoupling ramps, and these are working really nicely too. I think it's definitely going to be good fun to be able to do some shunting here while having two trains running around the main circuit. It adds a lot of operational potential to the layout and being in a smaller gauge like TT, this area doesn't feel crowded or cramped like it would in 00. Now that all the track laying is done, I can really start to crack on with more of the scenic side of the layout. This is really where the big transformations will start to take place, and don't forget if you want to see that right away, you can watch the next episode now by becoming a channel member. I'm really excited to show you everything that's coming up, but that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!